Hey, my friend. So a good buddy of mine, Michael, recently purchased a BMW X5M. And while it's technically not his, it's actually his wife's daily driver. I think realistically, it's only a matter of time before we wind up at Sears Point at the Wednesday night drags seeing whose soccer mom mobile is really faster. Now, by the book numbers, this thing is 4.9 seconds 0 to 60, and his BMW is a few years old. Uh, I seem to remember it's 4.5 seconds 0 to 60. So he should beat me, honestly, handily. But uh, I've never really done any performance testing on this thing to kind of see what it can do. And I've got a few ideas on things we can do to, to maybe pull a little more power out and maybe surprise that BMW a bit. I've got a new uh, G-Tech Pro to go ahead and wire up. Um, let's go do some test runs and see what we get. All right, let's start off with a weigh-in. Uh, 50, 60, 5,060 pounds with half a tank of fuel and meat. All right, so first thing we're going to try is essentially a 0 to 60 and a possible full quarter mile run with a full battery. And I mean 100% full. I want to see if that's going to give us anything better. Um, nobody behind us. Let's pull onto some nice good pavement. A little bit of brake torque. All the way up to 100. Woo! All right, now we're gonna drive around a bit and kind of deplete the battery and uh, go do it again and see if we lose any time. All right, here we go for run number two. The first one was with 100% battery. This one is about 25%, so well under 50%. Some electric vehicles really don't get the same kind of uh, power once uh, the battery is not 100% full. So let's see what we can do. Quarter mile in 13.87 and the zero to 60, 5.29. Well, actually, quite good. Quite good. Okay, battery state did not matter at all. Uh, if anything, that was our best run so far. Wow, huh. interesting. So let's go uh, try a couple of uh, cute tricks that I've got in mind that might help us get even a little more power. Just put in. 10 gallons of $8 a gallon racing gas. Uh, unleaded, don't worry, but it's 101 octane. And so my theory is that a lot of uh, compressed engines with superchargers and turbochargers and stuff, you know, they run really close to the line of detonation and power. And so making the fuel even more detonation resistant at least on some engines, they will advance the timing even further and give you more power. I've always heard that Subarus are really good at that. These SPA Volvo engines, certainly they're high strung. I mean, two liters and you've got both super and turbocharger and etc. I wonder if the computer is smart enough to kind of probe the quality of the fuel and figure out that they, we've got some really good shit in here. Uh, the fuel tank was a little under half and we just put in 10 gallons of a 18, 19 gallon tank. So we've got more than half. So our octane level should have gone from what, 91 to like 96, 97 octane or so as far as the whole fuel tank goes. And I've got one more trick to try as well. All right, let's see what the Prancing Moose can do for us.
13.77 quarter mile. Let's check the zero to 60. 5.22. Hey, hey, hey. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's an improvement of a tenth. And I think the uh, the top end's trap speed and stuff actually um, improved substantially. Let's uh, let's get back to the computer and download the results and uh, see what we got. So here we are in GTEC's uh, run comparison software, and I've loaded three of the runs in here. Before anything else, let me just say, I don't care that any of these runs came anywhere close to 4.9 seconds, 0 to 60. I know that's what it says in the books, and I'm sure somebody has already commented in chat, Volvo sucks, can't do 4.9 seconds. I'm on a random farm road, I suspect slightly uphill, uh, got traction issues in first gear, uh, it's all bumpy and stuff, so oh, I don't care about accuracy. I care about consistency. If I make a change, I want to see that in the data. As far as the overall data reflecting what the official performance specs should be, someday when we're on a nice, flat, prepared racing service, we'll find that out and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So this first run here, remember, was with the battery fully charged, 100% charged, turned the charge mode off, and then went ahead and did the run almost immediately. And there are some serious issues here. Obviously, quarter mile time and zero to 60 times are bad compared to the other runs. And if we zoom in here, we can even see it in the graph, this big dip here between the two second and like the four or five second mark. Uh, and then also another big dip in the, uh, this is a speed graph that we're looking at. Another big dip here, really, um, really weird. Uh, I, I would have never expected a full battery to perform worse. I mean, I know that, I know that batteries on a charging don't like to throw a lot of current around when they're near 100% full, right? That's why your last 10 or 20% of charging goes slower. Um, but from a discharge standpoint, um, I don't know. I, I've never seen it before. And I totally didn't, didn't expect it. I, I had hoped to get some extra performance out of it. Definitely not the opposite. And if we go ahead and look at the quarter mile time here, 14.07, the little bit crosshairs here, time 14.07. You can see on the bottom uh, left there, the opposite corner of the screen, uh, the trap speed there was 95.3 miles per hour. Um, but definite issues here. Then between that and the red run, all I did was drive around for half an hour, burning my battery down to about 25%. And uh, we did a hell of a lot better. Let's go ahead and zoom out again. You can kind of see the red run really you know, matches a nice smooth graph right along with the green run, which is going to be the high octane run. And it's, uh, you know, it's slightly slower, but it's just fine. And if we come up here with our quarter mile time, 13.87, uh, 13.87, we can see our traps speed up to 99.1 miles per hour. So like a four mile per hour improvement. So a huge difference. Um, uh, crazy. I, I'm not sure how to explain that. Happy to hear any theories in the comment section down below. Uh, I actually did two runs with 100% battery to really be sure that this was correct. And it was correct. Um, he got me anyway. So the third run, then we put on our uh, prancing moose sticker uh, and also loaded in some 101 octane racing fuel. And uh, that was obviously the best. So our zero to 60 time went down by 0.07 seconds. And we made up another 0.03 to have a combined 0.1 second difference here at the quarter mile mark. Uh, what is our quarter mile time? 13.77. So if we go ahead and zoom in a little bit and go to 13.77 seconds. We can see that our trap speed was 100.15 miles per hour. So we gained another mile per hour in uh, trap speed, and we definitely saved a little bit of time down there in our series zero to 60 end of things. So this is the horsepower graph. And the way that GTEC does this is it's combining its information on speed and acceleration and adding that with the weight of the vehicle. So it knows how much mass you are accelerating and therefore how much power that you are developing actually to the wheels, right? This is not crank data. This is just to the wheels and so it's substantially less than the theoretical peak of 400 horsepower that the Volvo has. And if we go ahead and zoom in on the peaky point of the graph here, about seven seconds, and another thing about the GTEC data for what it's worth is there's wind resistance, right? This isn't a, a dyno graph where you're sitting on a dynamometer, 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 a dynometer, 
and uh, you know, with no wind blasting against you. So at the higher end of the graph here, you definitely are having wind resistance fighting against you substantially. And as you can see here, we definitely have a little bit of improvement. Uh, each set of lines is 10 horsepower. And uh, so we've got about five-ish between our best run with normal fuel and then our run with the racing gas. Uh, about five horsepower difference or so, and definitely a, a serious drop off for that black run, that first one with the full battery. I don't get that, folks. That is just that is just weird. Uh, anyway, so a uh, big drop off there, but then interesting stuff down in this part of the graph. Check this out. So uh, remember, just above, let me zoom out a little more. There we go. Just before 14 seconds is our uh, quarter mile time, right? And you can see that the uh, the power from the better fuel is giving kind of a couple of different two bursts of extra power. What I think was going on here is the ECU is actually probing the fuel. It's actually turning the timing up, making more power, and then maybe it starts to sense the start of a little bit of knock and it starts backing off a bit and then it starts advancing it again. The other thing that might be happening here is that the engine is getting hot, right? Uh, so we've been accelerating for 10 seconds, 11 seconds, 12 seconds at this point. We've been accelerating as hard as we can for 12 seconds. And so we have a huge divergence here where the uh, the normal fuel is really as power is being pulled way back, whereas the green line is a good 25 to 30 horsepower better. Let me say that again, 25 to 30 horsepower better um, that's huge. That's like in the in the 10% ballpark um, of the power gain that we're getting by having substantially better fuel and, of course, the uh, the prancing moose. So uh, cool stuff. I, I am definitely jealous of those of you out there that have better fuel in your area. Again, in California, 91 octane is the best we get. Uh, the cheap stuff is 87 and the blend between the two is 89. And I know in other parts of the country, you get like 93 or 95 and stuff. Uh, that's cool. You're definitely getting more power than us over here in California, unless we do crazy tricks like pump in some race gas. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.